Oh, hey, what's up? It's Ralph Bob. Greetings, fellow Tarnished. I'm here to discuss today what my top picks for starter classes are in Elden Ring and to go over some pros and cons of each one, looking at their attributes, their equipment, maybe some of their move sets and spells. This is to assist those that are fresh to the game. And also, maybe you are looking to start a second character uh, and are curious at what some good options are. So let's take a look and let's hop in right now. All right, so we are starting with the Vagabond class. We're gonna look at the stats really quick. They have the highest vigor to start out with, which is going to be your HP. So they have the highest base HP. They have a high strength start and a decent dexterity start. They're good for quality builds, which means weapons that take both dex and strength are pretty decent for this guy. I would definitely focus more strength build, but you can kind of go whichever way you want. Having high HP means you're a little bit more tankier. You have a shield with a 100% physical damage reduction, which is great. It's rare for classes to start with this kind of shield. You have a long sword, which is a very good starter weapon. Unfortunately, this doesn't start with any ranged options, though you can find a bow very quickly. So I'd recommend go finding a bow or picking up a couple daggers along the way. Overall, I have had a good start with this guy. You can definitely pick up some very big strength weapons early on, like a great sword or a great axe, and really pump up the strength. And if I was doing tanky build with heavier armor, I definitely would bump up some endurance points at least. So you can use the heavier stuff. There is a shield fairly early in the game that you can pick up called the brass shield that drops off some enemies. And it is a very, very good shield and requires 16 strength. That is some good options for you as the Vagabond. All right, next we have the warrior. So for those who aren't focused on shields like the Vagabond, and want to dodge instead, this might be the class for you. I uh, will take a look at the stats real quick. Very high dex and everything else is about pretty, pretty mediocre. One thing to note is that arcane gives you item discovery. So the higher your arcane, the more likely you are to get item drops. The warrior and vagabond start fairly low arcane. So just be aware of that. So this is purely a high dex build with dual wield weapons. So if you are interested, in a more dodge heavy, dual wield focused, then I would go with this guy. Now there are some downsides to this character. Uh, you don't have any ranged options once again. So finding a bow or something to throw at enemies is a good option. You do start with a shield, but it is 64 physical damage negation which means you're not blocking 100% of the damage. But if you are more focused on dodging, then this is your character. I would suggest this character for people who have more experience with Souls games, because I personally think blocking and heavier, a little bit heavier armor is the way to go for newer players. But if you want to get used to the game, more fundamentals of the game, then dodging is a good way to be and getting used to doing dual wield weapons helps but also you're going to be upgrading two weapons as well so you're going to have more resources going into your weapons so just be aware that this is a more to me a more for more experienced uh dark souls players all right time for the hero class so let's take a look at the stats real quick uh decent vigor there and high strength and decent endurance as well and also notably uh, a decently high arcane, so you have good item discovery as well. So this class is very much so focused on the strength aspect, already having 16 points of strength in there. Um, the only things that you have on your equipment is a banded axe, as well as a large leather shield. This is definitely a more two-handed focus build for heavy strength weapons, great swords, great axes, stuff like that. Uh, the shield is not that great, it's not the worst, and you can one-hand this axe right off the bat, but I would definitely be more focused on two-handing these weapons. That's pretty much it. If you're going for big gladiator guy with two-handed sword, uh, big barbarian homie, then uh, this is the way to be. It's pretty self-explanatory. Once again, no ranged weapons on this, so be aware of that and good luck out there being a barbarian. Now we are into the bandit class. Now this class 
is very interesting to me. Decent decks, but very high arcane to start off with. So good item discovery. I see arcane dexterity as being the bleed build for blood abilities and stuff like that. Um, so if you're more focused on high dex, parries, dodges, uh, backstab, stuff like that, this is a class for you. So let's take a look real quick at the equipment. The Great Knife has extra critical damage on it which means you're gonna be doing more damage with backstabs and reposts. The buckler has a special unique thing for shields, which is the buckler parry, which if you play Dark Souls before, uh, it does this unique parry where it comes out a little quicker and I believe it enhances, like it extends the amount of time you can parry by like a split second. So it enhances the parry timing window, which is very nice paired with the critical damage of the dagger. Um, something else to note is that it starts with a bow. Bandit starts with a bow, which is fantastic. So you have ranged options, you have good backstabs. Um, your defenses are a little bit limited, so you're gonna be stealthing a lot more. One thing to note about the bow is this particular bow has a special where you can just fire it off like a machine gun. There are other bows that you can use that will charge up. And bows are actually fairly strong in this game, especially the ones that you can actually charge. Bow builds are definitely viable, so be aware of that. I do think there are some unique bandit builds, especially with dual wielding daggers. Daggers are pretty deadly in this game. I do think this is a good pick overall for the melee. So if you go bandit, I wish you luck. All right, so we're gonna hop into the sword, the Astrologer, actually, which is a spell casting class. It's one of the first ones we're looking at. Um, it's pretty straightforward. This is more focused on casting than their shield and weapons. Uh, they do start out with a decent sword and a not so decent shield, but let's take a look at the stats real quick. High intelligence, decent dexterity, and high mind. So you have good amount of mana to start out with, good amount of intelligence, and Notably, dexterity actually increases your casting speed. So just be aware of that, that it actually does fit into the casting build. Everything else is pretty low, so you're gonna be kind of squishy. You're starting spells, glintstone pebble, which is a little laser beam, and then the glintstone arc, which is a more AOE focused. You can hit multiple targets with it. Um, it's great for if you can't, if you are trying not to lock on and you wanna just swing your arc at somebody, It'll definitely sweep more of an area for you. And other than that, his uh, the equipment on him is pretty straightforward. Short sword, crappy shield, and the your very squishy, squishy low armor. He's a very good caster. The spells are very nice and very usable and will get you through a lot of the early game. Just be aware that there are a lot of enemies that are weak to magic, so you feel super overpowered sometimes but there are also enemies that are very resistant to magic, which will make you feel like the game is borderline impossible to play. So just be very aware that magic is a blessing and a burden and good luck trying to find the super dope, super amazing magic spells in the end game. All right, so now we have the other spell casting class. Just flip the coin of the, from the astrologer. Uh, instead of sorceries, we have incantations which is the faith holy spells and pyromancy build it's pretty straightforward again the stats are mostly faith based and some mind for mana and everything else is kind of split in between you're fairly squishy your armor is very very limited to start out with your shield is probably the worst shield to start with um, the weapon is your short spear which is not the greatest spear. Uh, the spear is okay. I think some people have some success with the spear because it has decent range. The hitbox is a little tough to hit stuff with when things are moving and flying around you all the time. So just be aware of that. I don't personally enjoy the spear that much. Um, it does have a nice charge move. And besides that, incantations are rare in the early game. You will probably struggle to find some uh, until the midpoint to late game. So just be aware that faith build is probably the one of the harder t uh, builds to start out with. Um, so you do start out with a more kind of shotgun 
close range fire blast as well as a heal ability which is great uh, for the early game to get some sort of out of combat heals i recommend just doing this out of combat instead of in combat and saving your health potions for in combat and other than that just try to stick it out and get your incantations late and good luck all right now we get to go into the samurai now this is one of my favorite melee builds it's actually the one i'm continuing my main progress on right now so let's take a look at the stats high dexterity decent vigor decent endurance and decent strength so overall a well balanced melee build uh, with a little bit of more of dexterity focus i really like the samurai a lot and now the real place where it shines not aesthetically pleasing as it is uh, the equipment is where it shines so we have the uchi katana to start off with which is a very well balanced in damage causes bleed the move set is great it has some range to it it has a poke slashes the two hand is fantastic once again it builds up bleed bleeding enemies in this game is very very beneficial especially on bosses bleeding damage is very powerful in this game so the uji katana is great at that um, it has this uh, stance that you can use to have do a power stance and it hits very very hard it's very good. So the Uchi Katana is one of the best starting weapons in my opinion. You start with a longbow, which is great. You have fire arrows as well. Um, this is the one where you can charge up your shot, the special shot, like so. You do extra damage. The, sh the only downside is the shield is pretty bad. So I wouldn't really utilize the shield that much, but the armor is decent. You stay medium load, you have a ranged weapon, you have a really good melee weapon, and you can kind of build out your character how you see fit uh, with the melee stats that they provide you. So overall, I think Samurai is one of the better uh, melee classes to start out with, and I would highly recommend it to anybody. Okay, so now we are in with the Prisoner, and now this is a very interesting uh, spellcaster class that we're dealing with with this guy. So let's take a look at the stats. So the stats are fairly evenly distributed here, um, as opposed to the astrologer who was pretty squishy and had pretty low stats and everything else but intelligence. So you don't start with a, with as much mana. Your dexterity and intelligence are your highest stats with, and they're both equal, which would make will make sense in a moment when we look at the Equipment, so you start with a stock, which is a rapier type weapon, which scales very well off dexterity, but sadly the critical is not increased like the uh, bandit's dagger. I would have assumed that the critical strike rating would be more improved with this kind of dex focused caster build. You start with a rift shield. It's pretty weak shield, doesn't even have the same parry as the buckler from the, from the bandit class. It does boost focus, which means it will increase your resistances to madness and sleep. The armor's fairly straightforward. That's about it, really. Oh, the his ability, the one spell that he starts out with is Magic Glint Blade, and it hovers in the air for a moment before it strikes whatever you are attacking. So you can summon quite a few of them and then they'll, they'll strike the next enemy if that kind of spell is interesting to you and you are going for a more dex focused build with the as well as a caster build then maybe prisoner is for you it's the most interesting one to me the bit unique in its play style just remember that dexterity also increases your spell casting speed so it does work together in tandem so good luck out there if you're gonna go prisoner all right so we have the confessor up next and let's take a look at his stats this particular class is one of the highest starting levels you start at level 10 highest 
stat is faith, so it is a faith focused build, but it's an even distribution all across. You have a decent amount of mana. Strength and dexterity are pretty even. So this guy is more focused on a weapon focused faith build. So a kind of a paladin almost. I do like the look of the cloak as well. It's one of the, <laughs> it's definitely a plus for me. Fashion souls category. Um, the shield, if we go to the equipment, is actually 100% physical damage negation, so it's on par with the Vagabond, or the only two classes that start with 100% physical damage negation shield. Uh, you have standard broadsword and your caster incantation seal. The stats of the armor are pretty decent, and overall, he's a good build. He's decently beefy. He has a heal as well as Assassin's Approach is his other spell that he starts out with, which makes your footsteps become silent and you're very stealthy. Now, I haven't had an issue with any stealth in this game. As long as you're crouched like this, then you can pretty much sneak up on just about anybody. But if you are trying to stealth through without aggroing anything or touching anything, then that's a good option to have if you're um, just trying to get by some dangerous enemies or just sneak off and get some items so overall i think this guy is a great pick for a paladin type of build uh shield and weapon focused incantation build i wouldn't probably not go this guy for pyromancies but then again because i think for pyromancy you also need arcane stat so you would you would be splitting a lot of your stats up with this particular build all right, and last but probably least, in some people's eyes, probably best. It's the Wretch class, which has been a class that you could choose in almost every Dark Souls type game out there. And there's little to say about this guy. He starts with no armor. He starts with one weapon, the club, which gives him beast barbaric roar, which increases your attack power and also makes it so you can do savage attacks as well this is the only piece of equipment you start with so good luck finding and scavenging for your equipment the stats are 10 across the board and you start at level one so you can really mold this character into somebody unique to yourself and to your playstyle. but it's going to be a hard rough start if you don't know where any of the items are so good luck if you're gonna start with this guy all right, so now that you've had a look at the different classes of the game, you can go in and make your own choices. And I like to say that all of these classes have preset kind of build paths, but they're not, they're more of guides than anything. You don't have to stick to the dex build. You don't have to stick to a bandit build the whole entire time you can be like well i'm just kind of go i'm gonna go paladin now <laughs> in the middle of your game be like I, this is the weapon i want to use you know what i mean do what you want to do uh it is nice to have a, an idea of what you want to do when you're going in so just keep that in mind and if you liked the video and it helped you please subscribe like comment and i'll see you in the next one have a good one